Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant.
to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. For you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. And we will sing your praises. Hallelujah.
God triumphant all my life. Everybody in the congregation, could you sing that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God has been faithful all my life to have been so good. Take a moment and just tell God, thank you. Tell him, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, he's been faithful. He's been faithful. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all, all, all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to save us. He didn't have to keep us. He didn't have to wake us up. He didn't allow us to have a right mind. But I'm so glad. That he did. So glad that he did. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm able, every breath that I'm able, I'll sing. Has God been good to anybody in the house this morning? Has God been good to anybody in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to move on. But just lift your hands and just wave them to him. Just tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for loving us. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for the blessing.
blessings that your name wants to be. Blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you. Just want to thank you. I'm just grateful. I don't know about you, but I'm just grateful. I'm giving thanks with a grateful heart. Oh, because he's been so good. So good. So good. So good. So good. So good. He's been so good. Hallelujah. You know, in the scripture, one of the ways that God is referred to is as El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Any, how many people have heard that before? El Shaddai. Raise your hand if you've heard that terminology before. El Shaddai. And El Shaddai simply means all sufficient. Another way of describing is many breasted. And, and what the scripture is, 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 is highlighting to us is that God is the type of God that is able to meet every need. Every single need. And not only is he able to meet every single need, but he has unlimited resources to give you what you need. I don't know if you've ever seen animals if you watch nature, you see the animals and they, they, the mother is, is trying to give milk, but there are more animals than what the mother has supplied to give. So they're all trying to get just a little bit as best as they can. But the God that we serve is able to supply and meet all the needs of every one of his children. The Bible says it this way, my God shall supply all my need. He didn't even say needs. He said need. In other words, there's nothing uh, that you need that God cannot supply according to his riches. Where is it? Where is it? All right, all right, all right. According to his, his riches in glory. What I, what, I, what I want us to understand this morning is there is no dream that you have that God can't supply for. There is no business that you can open that God can supply for. There is no home that you need to live in that God can't make a way for. Uh, there is no, there is nothing, there is no tuition that you need to pay that God can't pay for. Everything you need, not, not only, not only in, in, in financial terms, but emotionally he can meet your needs. Physically, if you need healing, if you need deliverance, he's able to meet the need. Uh, 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 every area, economically, uh, mentally, spiritually, whatever you need, God has got the supply. He is El Shaddai this morning. He is El Shaddai. What the enemy tries to do to us, I, I want to say, what he tries to do is to get us into the mindset that there is not enough, Bishop. Uh, it's a plan of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy that he tries to put on our mind that there is not enough. And we begin to develop ulcers and anxiety and worry and, and, and stress and agony and tension because the devil is working a plan on our mind. Oh, to get us to believe that we serve a God that does not have enough. But I, I speak to every leaking faucet, every leaking roof, every leaking pocketbook, every every oil leak, every, every any area in your life that it seems like it's lacking. I come to let you know that God is able to meet the need in your life. I wish someone would shout with me. He's able. He's able. He's, come on, raise your faith with me. He's able. He's able. Oh, 
I don't care what the bank account says. I don't care what it says around you. I don't care if there's a crack in the ceiling. God is able! So this is what I want you to do. I want you to partner with me this morning in giving. Partner with me in giving. You see, we got to fight against the scarcity mentality that says that there is not enough and I have to hold I have to hold everything real close because if I give anything then I, I, I won't have enough to meet this. I won't have enough to meet that. The devil is a liar and God, Jesus is Messiah. If you can give and God will give it back to you pressed down, shaken together and running over. I want you to partner with me this morning. I, I'm, I'm, I want, I'm gonna give, I, I, the word that comes to my mind is 40. I don't know about 40, I don't know why God is, but I'm gonna give $40 this morning and I need someone to partner with me. I need some people to partner with me this morning. I don't usually do this. This is no pressure, you don't have to give. You don't have to go in this direction, but listen, in your spirit, I, I, I just need some people to partner with me this morning. Anyone, I, I need you to give forty forty dollars this morning. Lift lift your hands up if you if you if you if you're gonna give forty. Raise your hands with me. Thank you. God bless you, Minister McLeod. God bless you. God bless you. I see those hands that are about to give. Amen. Forty forty forty. I don't know why that number. This is not my normal way of doing things. Uh, this is no pressure. I'm not manipulating or anything. Just uh, I just just I'm just following the spirit this morning. Anyone that knows in their heart that they're going to give 40 this morning. Anyone want to partner with me this morning? Partner with us as we give in, in the house this morning. I know my bishops and pastors, they already, I don't even have to look in that direction. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Sandra. Amen. I know that we're going to give in the house. Amen. Amen. One of the things uh, that I noticed in the book of Acts chapter 2 is that everybody, the Bible says that everybody took what they had. Everybody took everything that they had and they gave it. Not just, they gave everything, clothes, food, everything, they gave everything. And the Bible says that nobody within the body of Christ lacked anything. Nobody lacked anything. If you have that, would you just stand with me? Those of you who have your tithes as well, would you stand with me? We're getting ready to give in the house. We're getting ready to give in the house. Amen. But I don't want to neglect. I want to give the opportunity. Uh, almost last call, but I want to say, if you want to partner with me in giving that 40 this morning, I'm giving online. You can give through PayPal. You can give through ttcog.com, or you can give through Givelify, the app. Either one of those, but we're going to give in the house. Amen. Stand with me. Stand with me. And we're going to do our declaration. Amen. Online givers, I see you. God bless you. I see all of you that are giving this morning. Whatever you have to give, that's all right. That's all right. If you don't have it, that's okay. We love you the same way. Amen. But we want to break the scarcity mentality that the devil is trying to inflict on the people of God. We are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. We are blessed going out. We're blessed coming in. Whatever, whatever it is, God has spoken. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what your bank account says. I don't care what any of that says. God says you are blessed. Amen. You lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I want nothing. I want nothing. Amen. 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 Stand with your offering with me. Lift those, those offerings up. Your tithes as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I move towards a triumphant life. No, man, that sound like that sound like scarcity mentality. Amen. Are you moving towards a triumphant life? As I move, come on, declare with me. As I move towards. As I move towards. I need you to say it with faith, with, with faith, with faith, with faith. As I move towards a triumphant life. As I move towards a triumphant life. I accept every supernatural. I accept every supernatural. Concept. Concept. And idea. And idea. That God has. That God has. To lead me. To lead me. To my destiny. I sow triumphantly. I sow triumphantly. I'm, not, I'm not sowing from scarcity. I'm sowing because I'm triumphant. Amen. I sow triumphantly. I sow triumphantly. Come on, say that. I sow triumphantly. I sow triumphantly. I reap triumphantly. I reap triumphantly. I give triumphantly. I give triumphantly. I live triumphantly. I live triumphantly. 
I live triumphantly. I need you guys to do me a favor. I need you to say that every day this week. Every day this week. I would need you to say that. By now, you should know it by heart. Uh-oh. By now, you should know it by heart. I want you to say that every day this week. Amen. I live triumphantly. Okay. Amen. Say the parts you know, or you will, I'll put it in the group chat, uh, the, the WhatsApp. All right. Before we, before we give, amen, we're going to pray. Amen. But I want to remind everybody. Amen. Going forward, everybody here is a part of the worship team. And uh, this just came to my mind while we were worshiping. We used to do a thing where we used to put the songs in the church WhatsApp. I'm giving you an assignment this week. We're going to put the songs in the WhatsApp again. And I want you to click on them on YouTube and listen to them. Get them, get them. So when we come together, you rehearse it. So by the time we come to sing, it's almost second nature. Can you do that? Lord have mercy. Amen. I want one. Are you gonna Are you gonna work with us this this week? All right, we're gonna drop it in the WhatsApp and listen. I want everyone to listen, and I want everyone to come prepared for worship Sunday morning. Amen. We're gonna pray. We're gonna seek the face of God, and I want you to listen to those songs and get them in your head and in your spirit. Amen. Worship team, you can't help me out. Look at the light. All right, all right. All right, Father, we thank you for this offering. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Lord, uh, the ceiling of doubt, the ceiling of lack, amen, we break it now. And we declare that we are under an open heaven. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. And you're going to bless us spiritually. Amen. You're going to bless us physically mentally, financially. And Lord, more than all, we're going to bless you back because we can't beat you in giving. So we're going to keep giving back to you. We will not live in scarcity. We will not live in fear, but we will live by faith and give by faith. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor in Jesus' name. The worship team is about to sing. Afterwards, we're going to have a christening Amen. Anyone, anyone excited about the christening? Yeah. All right, so we're going to have a christening. But I want to let you know that next week is the official launch of our, our children's church. Yeah. All the parents should be rejoicing. Next week is the official launch of our children's church. Amen. Amen. So this week we are just going to be meeting together upstairs for a little bit. But uh, next week is going to be the official launch. And... The end of this month, I want you to prepare because the end of this month, the last Sunday, not of this month, of October, last Sunday of October, we're going to be having uh, our favorite character day, last Sunday. So kids are going to come to church, they can dress as Abraham, they can dress as Joseph, they can dress as their favorite superhero, whatever they want to dress as, but that's going to be a special day, the last Sunday in October, all right? So put it on your calendar so you can start to, you know, get whatever you need together so we can do that. Amen. We're, we're moving forward. Amen. Amen. All right. It's time to give. Give us the time to hear me now. All right. Uh,
and everything that has breath. All right, ushers, I'm going to ask you to escort that special family down. Pastor Richard is going to facilitate this part of the service. Amen. Let's keep that going. Praise the Lord. One, two, three, and to give God a praise. Come on, let's stand and give God a praise. Has God been good to you? Come on, we give God praise in the worship. Yes. What an awesome worship service. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. God has been good to us. God is a good God. God is an awesome God. I want to remind the church that every day that a baby is born to the church to be blessed, it's a blessed day. It's a wonderful day. Oh, somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. Thank God for Pastor David Lindsay and the the worship team and musician and our dear Pastor Richards, Pastor Watson, amen, all the pastors and all the ministers, to all the wonderful members of this church, and especially to the visitors this morning. We truly honor God for you. Come on, let, let's stand and give all the visitors a triumphant welcome. Come on, triumphant. Come on, triumphant. Truly honor God for you and the visitors this morning. And I want to just take time out to honor my beautiful wife, a blessed woman of God, a, a heaven-sent woman that God has sent in my life. Thank you so much. And I also want to praise God for my mother. Uh, yes, I God we praise. Thank God. God has been good. This, this afternoon, I, I struggle with this message because I'm saying, Lord, is the atmosphere ready for this kind of message? <laughs> I, I try to change this message so many times, but God just have me stuck on this theme. And I realize more and more that it is what God is saying. It's not what I am saying. As a matter of fact, it has nothing to do with me. If I, could, if I could change it, I would have changed it long time ago. But I believe the Lord wants to bring an alertness to the church of the time we're living in. And for the church not to be too comfortable in, in this present world, but to be prepared for the great catching away. For the, prepare for the great in gathering of God's people. This morning I want to sound the alarm, blow the trumpet, and I pray that you are not irritated, but you will get to understand what God is saying to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody bless God. You find me reading from the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2. Verse 1 said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in the holy mountain. Let all inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for, he is, for it is at hand. I wanna, want you to write something in your spirit, inscribe it in your heart today. And simple this, get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Woo! Get ready. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever, whatever is going on in your life, you make sure you get ready. Neighbor, the signs are clear. The echoing is louder, so get ready. 
Father, I come. I need you more than anyone else in my life. I need you to drop your Holy Spirit of fresh anointing in me and through me today. I pray that you will help me to speak as the Spirit give utterance. I pray set the place and fire not so much with noise but a reasoning. And let us to weigh ourselves in the, in, the, in the balance. And God, help us to be aware of the time we're living in. I come now, Lord, asking of you that you bless this word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Over the past week and being so tired and uh, convention and all the many things proceeding to convention. And, but I want to thank God, as I always do, for all the wonderful word that I've just God we used to preach in this place. From our David, from Pastor David Lindsay to Pastor Richard to Pastor Jillian and all the many others. My darling wife and daughter and whole host that God used in this church. One thing God I've struggled with, and I as I listen, especially when Pastor David expound the word of God, I'm troubled. In my spirit, if the church is just, if we are just coming to church, or we are just listening to a, a message, or we are absorbing the word, and are we taking heed to the, to the word of God? Let me say this. Every time the preacher comes to declare the word, he's saying or she's saying what God said. And he's saying that, he's saying or she's saying what God wants her or him to say. Because God have a way of using his people to declare what he wants for the church now. Because the church belongs to Jesus. Oh, somebody bless God. The church belongs to Jesus. And the second verse of, of Joel, it says, a day of darkness and gloomness. A day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountain, a people come great, great and strong, like the like of whom has never seen, yet seen. Nor will there be ever be any such after them, even for many successive generation. Church, get ready. The indicators are clear. All the indications are clear. The, the battle cry is louder. The news are saying it louder. And many of us are sitting wondering what is going to happen. You have seen the turn the economy. We have seen the turn in hatred within, even within our church, in our home, and in the in the in the world, and in our country, where hatred is in a, a rise. It has come to a place, and we have many of us have never yet seen it before. The place is so thick with hatred that you can't just go anywhere that you want to go, as we used to go. And, and I want you to understand that even the churches. The church has become so politically minded that the church has become like a social club. And it seems as if God is not, I've not seen a God is now where to be found. But I come to let the church realize that God is seeing, God is watching, and God is taking note. We have seen within the church. The attitude of, our individual, of the individuals in the church. The ism and the schism, the way we carry and the way we talk to each other. The way we, the, all the negative disposition that we have seen in the church. And some of us, we so rude and bold that we, we fear no one. We speak anyhow we want to. There's a boldness that the enemy has somewhat in, in store within the church that God, if God has not really returned, then God helped the church. 
Because there is such an attitude in the church. There's such an attitude in our society. And so for some reason, the church have grabbed a hold of the all the negative and the, and the faceliness that society is breathing. And the world, the church, as if it wanted to be like the world. And the world is running and looking for somebody to represent, that they can admire. For some reason, the church has lost its way. And we have become like a social club. And it's sad that even on today, if you're going to all the various churches, just because you're black, maybe you, weren't, you wouldn't be welcome in certain section or certain part of the country in a, in a place where God's word is being preached. This is, this is what Jesus spoke of. When in his word, then he said, listen, when you see these signs and these wonders, when you see all these things, listen, man's redemption draw it nigh. Oh, my God. Get ready. In other words, stop sleeping and wake up. In other words, wake up and smell the coffee because the time as far spent, and Jesus is at hand. Oh, God Almighty. Oh, somebody bless God. In this wonderful text, if there had been newspapers in Joel's day, the headline might have read, Locusts invade the land, or nation faces severe economic Crisis. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Joel, a true messenger of God, grabs the people, grabs the people's attention to the fact, referring to all what was going on and what they were seeing. And he wanted them to realize that judgment is here, judgment is about to come. I want the church to realize that when we see these signs and wonders, we must always get ready for there is always something after all of this. Let me say to the church, don't believe that all people going to church are people that are negative and miserable and all that. There are people that are saved that love God and are ready for the great catching away of the church. But let me say this in this sense, that there are people that are just coming to church and they are just coming because, because they have the opportunity to come. But I want you to know, I want you to, to understand, church, that it's not about just coming. It's about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus wants us as the leaders to blow the trumpet in Zion and let the people of God be aware of the time and the season we are living in. Oh, come on, brethren. Let me say this. It's not a time for fun as others want you to believe. It's not the time where you come just relaxing and just coming to church, sitting and looking. It's not at this time where you come in and go out. God has called the church for a special reason. God has called the church to impact the world and to bring salvation to every corner. Every host how in the name of Jesus Christ. In other words, you are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. As, as Joel declared, God is saying to you too, I want to use you to declare my word, to declare my warning to the world because the world has gone topsy-turvy. Look what's going on in Ukraine. A man just got up overnight 
get all itchy and tired or something, and he just want to declare war on another country. Not only does he want to just declare war on another country, but he want to take in their land and call it his own. Look what's going on in our society where people now fear God no more. They talk about God as if God was just a little thing. Oh God, look, what, look at how the church, look at how the church represents Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Look at how the church, when we come in and I, when we come for worship, look how we carry on. Look, look when we come to church, listen to the conversation we have. Listen when, when the preacher is preaching. Listen to the conversation that is going on in the back. The fear of God of someone left the church. And God wants me to bring an alertness to the church. To let, let's get it back together. Let's get it together. And we can only get it together when we get ready and knowing who we are getting ready for. We have been ready for his, his appearing. Oh God. Let me say this brothers and sisters. Don't just believe that coming every Sunday. It's going to be like this all the time. There are going to come a time when Jesus put in his appearance. I tell you, I didn't want to preach this message because you don't hear this message preached no more. But I, as I say that God wanted me to declare this word and speak this word because it's high time for the people of God to understand the time we are living in. Hallelujah. Let me say that this church, this church will not, I won't be a social club. And those who sometimes, you know, we are so proud and become so, we are so full of pride. God is saying to the church, come down that I can talk to you. God is saying, come down that I can reason with you. God is saying, I have seen your work. And many of us, we are lukewarm. And my God is sad to say this. If, it, if we were cold, it would have been better, but we are lukewarm. We, we have, have a form of godliness, but God Almighty, uh, uh, the way we go about God's work, the way we go about church, the way we go about living for God, do says a lot. It says a lot. We are up and we are down. Today we are out and tomorrow we are in. Sometimes we haven't seen folks for months and they just slowly creep in as if they're still apart. And my question is, what have you been doing all these months, all these weeks when you, are, you have been away from, the God's, from God's church? Who are you accountable to? God is saying to the church, triumphant, get back in line. Get back in line, get back in line. And I'm, I, I'm not destroying a church or destroying a nation before I warn the church. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, get back in line. It is hard to preach, but get back in line. It is hard to hear this, but get back in line. Oh God, somebody praise God in this place. Somebody praise God in this place. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Joel intensify his warning referring to the darkness and the gloominess symbolizes judgment and intense uneasiness. There's such uneasiness in our society. There is such uneasiness in the in our home. There is such uneasiness in, in our government. Ah, is such uneasiness in the school system. There is such uneasiness in the church. There is such uneasiness in, in our home, as I said before. But there is such uneasiness within us as people of God. God is sending a warning to the church. 
God is sending a warning to his people. Oh, God, he wants you to understand as Joel Echo, hallelujah, and blew the trumpet. He is saying to the church, listen, get it right. Get it right. Get it right. If you are for God, be for God. I come to let somebody understand in this, in the case of the people of Judea, they were well aware of the economic condition. They were well aware of what was going on. But God have allowed Joel to declare in front of their naked eyes that they could see what was going on around them. Church, when you look around, have you not questioned and said, wow, is this the church that God is coming for? for? Huh? Look how we talk to each other. Look at the negativity that, some of us, that comes out of our mouth sometimes. I come to let the church to be aware that God, he loves you and he wants you to get back in line. He wants the church to be on fire. But you cannot be on fire when, you, when we act as if we are in a social club. Oh God, we cannot. Let me say this. Let me say this. And I stand firm on this. If you, are, if you are a man of God and you love God, you ought to serve God. And as Christian, you just can't be going to any, any, doing any, anything. No. And I come, my God, sometimes my spirit grieves because sometimes when the Spirit of the Lord brings things to you and show you things, my God, you're marveling your spirit. But let me say, church, I'm not here to expose anyone. I'm here to encourage you to get it right. I'm here not to tear you down. And maybe you have sinned last night and you have do your thing last night. I'm not he even here to, 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 to call you out. I'm here just to let you be aware that Jesus is saying to you, get it right. Mm, get it right. Get it right. Hallelujah. Joel understand this quite well. That God was using him to declare and to make it plain to the people. That judgment was at their door. I come to let you understand that it's not going to always be like this. It's going to be a change. And Jesus requires the church to get it right and get ready. Church, God calls you a speck of bird. He calls you his own. He said, I love you for the everlasting love. But he's saying also, I'm warning you to get it right. I'm warning you because I love you. And the only reason why I'm warning you because I have this special love for you that I don't desire for any to perish. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't have no desire for any to perish and to suffer the consequences of sin. But oh God, I want you to get it right to that you can be in a place that when I come, you can be in it. Let me say that judgment will come. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, judgment will come. Judgment will surely come. And Jesus is warning the people of God. And he's warning everyone in the sound of my voice to get it right. Get it right because Jesus, we have, we have heard this before, that Jesus is coming soon. We have heard it so many times that we, 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 we somewhat take it for just a statement. But let me say this. Let me say this. God has such deep, abiding love for his people. 
And he always wants us to be alert at the time and the season we are living in. Listen, there is a time we are living in that many of us have never seen before. There is a time and season we are living in that is real and truly oh, screwed up, messed up. Mm. It's, it's so messed up that you wonder what's going to happen to the next generation. Think about it. Deacon Brown, many years ago, we finished college or whoever got to college. You could finish college, get a job, and buy a house. Look at it now. Look at all the, how bad it is that all the many money you're working, you can't, some of you can't even buy a house. Why? Because we are seeing things that we have never yet seen. The tardness of time. The toughness of time. And it seems as if only one set of people are advancing, accumulating fun. But let me say this. God is saying to the church, you ought to just get your mind right. And our God will do for you what no other can do. He said, listen, in, in John, John 3, 17 declare, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But what he does, he said, but, but what? That the world through him might be saved. God's desire for his church, for them to be saved. And my God, let me say this. If you are in position today and you have been falling off and be living on the fence and living one, just living, just living on the fence, I come to challenge you to get it right. Get back in line with God. God desire to use you. God desire to prepare you. Prepare you for greatness. Prepare you for a purpose. Prepare you for destiny. But you got to understand that God is one in the church. Because you have seen our faults. You have seen where we have failed. And you realize that he loves us. And he will not destroy a country, a world before warning us. God is warning triumphant to get it right. Somebody say amen. God is warning somebody in triumphant to get it right. God is saying triumphant, get it right because I have a plan for you. God is saying to triumph and get it right. I have a purpose for you to fulfill. And my God, God is saying, I want, there are so many things that I want you to do. But I want you to get in line with me. Get in line with me. See, get ready. It's not just a word of condemnation. But it's a word of encouragement. You see, God is saying to the church, this is a season of preparation. Somebody say preparation. This is a season for preparation. When you look in the coming months, it will be, it will be uh, winter. Snow will always be in all, snow all over the place. The trees lost. I lose all the leaves. They're dried up and they look as if they're dead. But for some reason, the tree and the root go dig and go down. And it go down where the, where the coal has no effect on it. But it's going down. And matter of fact, the tree is preparing itself for warmer weather. You see, God so put it that the tree understand that there are going to be something else after this. So what happens is that the tree get ready for the, for the spring and summer. Where it now bloom and bring forth fruit. I come to let somebody know this, that God want us to get ready that we can produce fruit. 
And, and the only way we're going to do this unless we are prepared. Somebody say prepare. Somebody say prepare. Oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. You see, when we understand the whole layup or study of the tree, we must understand that even in the winter, we go in and spiritually some of us become dead and dormant. Right? Some of us become dead and spiritually dormant. But let me say this. When God sends the spring and we get awakened out of our sleep, look at the many work that God can use us to accomplish. I say, but we cannot do that until we get it right. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hear what, hear what, uh, what's the name? Joyce Meyer said. Uh, and thank you for, Jay, for quoting Joyce Meyer last week, Pastor. So Jesus said in verse 2, further on down in, verse two, in chapter 22, he says, surely I come quickly. Church, I want you to very Sunday that Jesus is being born again and Jesus is saying to the church prepare yourself because there will be a harvest prepare yourself when he comes and gather his people oh glory to God the question Jesus wants us to understand that as you prepare yourself and you line up with him, when you get ready, he will come and take you home. Oh, there is no doubt that Jesus is coming back. And there is no doubt that he's coming back for you. There's no doubt that he's coming back for a prepared people. But he's coming only for people that are prepared. In other words, if you are not prepared, you cannot be considered a part of that package. Let me say this, brothers and sisters. God, God bless you when you come. But he wants more than that. He wants to have a relationship with you. And on this Sunday, God is echoing this sound for you to get ready. He's echoing this sound. Get ready. Get ready. I'm coming back again. Get ready. Get ready. I'm coming back for you. Get ready. Get ready. I'm coming back for prepared people. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. Father, your people are here. Your people are here. They have listened to your word. And I beg of you, Jesus, that even now, as they reason with themselves, that God, those that are not prepared, they get it right and get ready. And even those that have been saved and live in some way or another, some else, some upside life, some unfulfilling life, I pray that you so minister to their heart that they will get ready for the great catch of you. God bless you. And I want you, I want the church to, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you, please, to join me at this altar. We want to pray that as a people, as a people, that we get ready. Join me here at the altar, please. Please, join me here at the altar. Let us all get, get it ready, get it right. Jesus is coming back. Whether we want him or not, 
whether we want to believe it or not, whether we want to accept it or not, whether we are prepared or not, whether you are saved or not, whether you are living wantonly, whether you are living carelessly or not, Jesus is saying to the people under the sound of my voice, get ready. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Dear Jesus, I come, we come. We ask of you, Lord, to forgive us our sin. But more so, we ask of you, Lord, to help us to get ready. To be the people that you call us to be. The people that you intended for us to be. The people, hallelujah, that you call us at the ruin of sin to be. I pray even now, God. That even now, God, you lay your hands upon everyone. And God, help us to be ready. Because Jesus, with all the signs and wonders, clearly, God, these are indicators that your coming is soon. So, Father, I ask of you in the name of Jesus. I ask of you now, God, to trouble some heart. I ask of you to trouble some heart. And that, God, even those that are walking, uh, and walking not in your will, but, God, I ask of you to help them to walk. And get it right that they will walk with you. I pray that God you will turn around. Hallelujah. Turn them around for your purpose. Turn them around for your good. Turn them around. That Jesus on this blessed day. There will be, this day will be a day of reckoning. Where we all see ourselves before you God. And even those who are walking wanting. Then walking. Hallelujah. Unfulfilled. That God. We'll come to a place where they know that you are God and that there is no God beside you. Forgive us our sin. Cleanse us, O oh God. We repent unto thee. We repent, O oh God. We repent. And God, we make, we choose you and make you the Lord of our lives. We repent, oh, oh, God. We repent unto day. And we choose life. Hallelujah. We choose you as our Lord. And as we choose you, God, we will walk circumspectly. Walking in your will. Lord, this message may be a little hard. A little harsh, a little tough. But God help us to understand it's because of the love that you have towards us. That you will send a word such like this. A word of warning for us to get ready. A word that you can prepare. Father, I pray that even now that you'll touch some heart. Touch somebody. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Dear one, with head bow, eyes closed, just dear one, who raised that hand up and said, Yes, Pastor McLeod. Yes, Pastor McLeod. I want to make sure that I'm a part of the number of Je in Jesus Christ. I want to be a part of the number. I want to make Jesus my Lord. By the raising of that hand. Is there one who would raise their hand and say, yes, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my personal saving Lord. I want to make Jesus the head of my life. By the raising of the hand. Is there one raising that hand? Is there one raising that hand? Is there one raising that hand? Making Jesus your Lord. Making Jesus your choice. Is there one? Is there one? 
is their why, is their, their financial pillar. Baby, this is the life of the church. You will have Pastor Jesus Christ. Because no one really knows what's going on. And the enemy is so, stu- so, stu- so evil that you may be going home. God forbid something happen. And that's it. Yes. This could be, this today could be the last day. To, today could be the last day for somebody standing at this altar. Today could be the very last that you hear the sound of someone asking you to accept Jesus Christ into your life. But let me ask again one more time before I take my seat. By the sound of their voice, is there one who would raise their hand and say, yes, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. Jesus is here and he's still waiting on somebody. Jesus is here and he's still waiting on somebody. And don't feel guilty. Don't feel no way out of you. Don't feel no way out of place. No. We have all been here. And he's saying that Jesus is coming. And Jesus is saying, make it, make, make, get ready. Because he's coming back. Very soon. And only receive Jesus Christ in their life. Will they be accessed to be with him. God bless you. Father, go with your people. Bless your people. Lord, strengthen those that are weak. Make them strong. Encourage those that are discouraged. Strengthen those that are between two opinions. Put your seal upon those that have accepted you in. That the enemy will have that of dominion over their lives. In other words, Jesus, preserve them and keep them in your fold. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody praise God in this place. Come on, somebody praise God. Thanks for coming. Thanks so much for coming. We love you. You're triumphant. Thanks for coming. And as you go, take this praise God and going back to your seat. Praise God going back to your seat. Praise God going back to your seat. Yes, get ready. Go with it. Get ready. Go with it. Get ready. Go with it. Get ready. He's coming back. Go with it. Get ready. He's coming back. Go with it. Get ready. He's coming back. Go with it. Get ready. Jesus is coming back. Go with it. Get a rest in your spirit. Jesus is coming back. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You, this may be the last Sunday you hear my voice. And I would only hear this last word in your spirit. In your spirit, get ready. Jesus is coming back. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Be ready to go. For soon he is coming. That day may be near. Get ready to go. ready to go with all the dear loved ones when he shall appear be ready to go be ready to go for soon he That day may be near, get ready to go, get ready to go, with all 
the dear loved one when he shall appear be ready to go hallelujah 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 praise God we have listened to the word of God today, and truly the spirit of God is right. This week it came to my spirit to put on the WhatsApp. Jesus is coming soon. Church, are you ready? I didn't do it, but here God brought it to his servant today. Tell the church to get ready, get ready. Hallelujah, because we are in the last days. Any day now, any day now, we can be going home. Songwriter said, the next hand you shake could be the hand of the Savior. The next step you take could be on streets of pure gold. The next meal could be the marriage supper. Hallelujah. The next hand you feel could be blessing your soul. Church, let us be ready. Let us be ready. Let us be ready. Let us be ready. Hallelujah. For any day now, we can be going home. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Next week, Sunday, will be a members meeting. All members of the church be here. We are having a members meeting after service next Sunday. God's willing, if God should tarry till then, because we are living almost on borrowed time. We are living on borrowed time, so we can't say next week as we ever like. Next week we might be in glory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We are going home, church. We are going home. We are going home! Yes, 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 we are going home. Amen. It might not be everybody. Maybe it's me. But we are going home. We are going home. We are going home. So we can't feel too content in this world anymore. Because this world, amen, we are just passing through. We are strangers and we are sojourners here. God bless you. We have some announcement. But next week in our members meeting, you will hear our plans, what we are going to do, our fundraising, and all the stuff that we are going to do. Amen. In the meantime, while we are here, we have to occupy until he comes. So we still have to do what we have to do until he comes. When he shall split the blue sky. Are you ready, church? Are you ready, church? Are you ready? Are you ready? He's coming again. He's coming again. Let us all stand. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from fault and to present us faultless before his presence, to the only wise God, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Be bold, be strong. Love loud, be triumphant, be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Ah, 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 ah,